Yo, yo, welcome back to another episode of The Diaries, episode 34. Been um, a pretty hectic start to the year. I've been slacking on the content as some of you guys have seen. I think it's, you know, really got to like a point where like I started posting on like Twitter and, and social media a little bit more. Like for years, I was just like behind the scenes, just, you know, running the business and stuff. And then um, you know, I started posting on social media to actually like get clients for the agency, um, which is cool, which is why I started posting on Twitter. It worked, got some clients from Twitter and then even just from Twitter, like other people just recommending me to people and then coming to me, um, which was cool. But if any of you have been probably no one has, but if anyone has been following, you know, what I've been up to over last year, last year was a pretty trans transformative and it's quite dramatic um a significant year of change in terms of like what i'm working on so you know i still run the agency we still have clients still running their campaigns we're in them we're going to start like a huge campaign for a big client starting this month that's all fine um but over the past year you know i've started a few different um businesses slash offers so this business which i do the diaries series on. And then I am also, I also collaborate with someone else. Um, and we run an offer together, which is, you know, similar ish to this. Um, and basically it's, I'm just doing the same work that the agency does, but I just get paid more. (laughs) You know, I just get 50% of the business as opposed to, you know, 10% of the advertising profit and like a smaller retainer. So obviously me personally, and just income wise for the whole companies that I own, Revenue has gone up in the last year, which is awesome. Um, but what that means is, is that like, I'm not really desperate to take on clients at the agency. Like we have a solid client base that we work with. We've been working with most of them over two years, some of them. So like, I have very good relationships with my clients. And honestly, like I have a few people message me booking in calls. I don't really care for it that much. Um, you know, we only work with a, like a select person anyway, someone who we know we could knock it out of the park for. Um, but being totally like, Honest, like the increase in revenue I'm getting from these different collaboration offers um, is better. So it's kind of like just the next phase of the agency or the company where, you know, I went from freelancer working by myself, then to agency owner where I had a team and a staff and we were just working with clients, you know, charging them a retainer and a revenue share. And then now I've gone into like the next phase, which is, you know, this business where I actually own the company with someone else and we split it 50 50 or another business where it's just more collaboration where we'll split 50 50 on the deal. Um, it's not necessarily like its own individual company. Um, so yeah, those deals, even though again, it's similar to the agency because it's the same type of work I'm doing the marketing, but we just have a bigger stake in the pie and you know, it's more lucrative for the company and overall income. So, um, the point is, is that I don't really, need to post on social media anymore to get clients. Like that's not a strategy I care about. So really I'm just posting on social media now because I do enjoy it. I like writing and I like posting, Um, but it's really just like for documenting stuff, stuff like this, which, you know, these views on these videos right now, anyway, are absolute trash. You know, it's like 10 to 20 people will watch. (laughs) So I'm not really doing it for the views or anything like that. It's just to kind of like document everything that's going on. And hopefully, you know, in a few years time, it'll look, it'll be cool to look back on this sort of content. So that's why I'm doing like the YouTube stuff. Um, yeah, Twitter and stuff. I'm just like documenting stuff, sharing stuff, you know, building the brand. But you know, again, it's like, it's difficult when there's not like an immediate ROI It's difficult to like prioritize that stuff. Like I enjoy doing it, but at the end of the day, if there's work that needs to like my attention in the collaboration offers or the agency, then that's going to drive more income than, you know, tweeting and stuff because it just doesn't bring me much or any income, honestly, right now. You know, I have courses and stuff, but like, it's like less than a percent of my income. Like I really don't care for it, honestly. So, um, and it doesn't bring that much money in anyway. So yeah. So that's kind of like why going into this year, I've really not been posting that much just because I've been busy with other stuff basically. Um, but I'm still going to keep these diaries episodes up. So anyway, what I wanted to share with you today is just kind of like the progress of the funnel and how it's working. And this is specifically for the ads, but we're doing loads of different stuff with the business right now. And we've had a decent month so far in January, 
maybe not as big as I wanted to, but you know, we've still got half the month left, so we've still got time. But the ad funnel specifically and the progress with that. So, you know, as a bit of background, as you know, it started, we finally got it profitable at around like August, September last year. Then we had a lot of issues with the ad account. And then we kind of got back up and running in December. Um, and December, we lost money. We lost about, not that much, you know, a few thousand um, on ads, um, which wasn't good, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, part of the process. So my goal for January wasn't like too ambitious. It was just to get break even on the funnel, right? Last month we lost money. This month, just continue testing and sorting the ad account out. And then hopefully we can kind of break even. And then in the future, hopefully we can scale and make a, a shitload of money. Luckily for us, you know, we have a decent organic audience and therefore, you know, the company still makes money and it gives me time to like test the ad funnel. But I just wanted to share the numbers with you, so what we've done so far. So January is pretty good. Uh, we're actually, I think we're like 0.95 ROAS. So I kind of take it as break even, which is good. The last few days or last week has been pretty good. The first week of Jan wasn't that good. The last second week of Jan, what we just had was pretty good. So uh, yeah, we're like break even right now. So we're kind of like at the goal that I wanted to, we're not spending crazy amounts of money, but you know, I want to get this spending, you know, as quickly as possible to like 5k a day, 10k a day would be like the goal, which would be like ridiculous, like well, not ridiculous, but like a low ticket funnel like this. Um, it would be cool to get that break even on such volume. But anyway, I just wanted to share. And by the way, when I say break even, it still includes the back end stuff, which I'll talk about in a second. So, um, so as you guys know, sales page, order bump, one-time offer. And then in the back end, we upsell them onto a high ticket program. I say high ticket. It's not really high ticket. It's 1K. So um, it's just like an automated thing though. We don't do any sales calls or anything for this business. So everything's automated. I'm trying to get my digital marketing hat on and trying to work it out. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you so far the numbers on like kind of the funnel. So it's been doing pretty well. So um, there's a few obviously things we can definitely improve, but and for now, if you look at it, the sales page, it's a $47 offer, oh, $47, and it's a 1.66% a conversion rate. The order bump is only seven bucks right now, and it's a 40% take rate. The one-time offer is a 66 order bump, and it's a 20% take rate. And right now, oh, I was going to put 1K, but it's 9.97. The, the back end offer that they get presented after the purchase is 997. And right now, 10% of people have taken that. So the actual funnel numbers are pretty good. So we need more data for sure. For, if, if this sticks at 10% at scale, then we're laughing. It'll probably go down, honestly, but um, I'll know when we have more data through the funnel. But right now, 10% is pretty good. I mean, January is kind of like a time that info products will increase a little bit conversion wise, generally across the board, especially ours. It's like a self-help product. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, if that continues at scale, that's awesome. I'll expect it to go down a little bit, but 10% was actually the goal that we want to get it to. So that's good. $66. This is 20% take rate. That's pretty good. Again, on a one-time offer, um, $47.66. In the future, we'll probably test the pricing out. We could even increase it to 97. Um, we might have to beef up the offer. I'd say this is a relatively weak offer. It could be better, um, but we've never had one dispute on it, never had one request for a refund. We've had requests for a refund of this $47 product just because you know, we've had a lot of customers. But this one-time offer, we've never had one person complain about it. So maybe it's not a weak offer, but... Um, anyway, we can split around with the split test of pricing, but you know, 20% take rate on that. I'm not too bothered about that right now. It's probably not like the needle mover. The order bump, 40% is high, but it's only seven bucks. So again, one thing we can definitely test is like doubling this or tripling this. That's no problem. Um, and then just see what effect it does to the percentage. But I just want to get the overall numbers a bit steadier. Um, but we, yeah, for seven bucks, we can definitely split test the pricing. That's like the main thing on this, or we could just split, split test the order bump altogether. I do think this order bump complements the main product pretty well. And it's kind of easy to explain as well, because you only get like a little piece of copy to explain what the order bump is. So I actually like this as an order bump offer, but I reckon we could definitely split test the pricing. 
Um, I don't have the average order value numbers up. I think the average order value is maybe around like 60 bucks, 67 bucks, something like that. Um, but just those tweaks, increasing the pricing, we could not do anything. And we just increase this to 97, increase this to like 14 or increase it to 21. And we could make more money that way. So that's something I've been thinking about. Um, but the main thing is probably just to increase the conversions on this page. $47, cold traffic, 1.66%. It's not the worst percentage in the world, but I do think that we can get more. Um, so, you know, one thing I did at the start of this year was go through the sales page and just make it more tailored to 2024. So, you know, had new year messaging on it, had like even just like the call out bit at the top of the page being like, for those looking to X in 2024, and on the bonus section of one of the bonuses, we have like exclusive bonus for January, 2024. So we've tailored the sales page a little bit to be more like new year angle. Um, so hopefully this will improve over the rest of the month. We made that change last week. This last week has been a lot better. So um, I'm looking forward to see the improvements on that, but that's the biggest, biggest needle mover right now. Um, I don't have the ad data up with me. Um, obviously, we're running Facebook ads to this, just for those who don't know. I don't know what the average cost per click is, but I think we can definitely increase, decrease the cost per click. So the biggest needle movers right now, I think, for this funnel is, number one, I need to improve the conversions on the sales page. Number two, I could probably get cheaper clicks from Facebook, so improve the ad performance. And then the third thing on my to-do list will be to increase the average order value in the back end. Um, which is going to be focusing on basically increasing the price on these two products. This conversion here, again, we need more data really to see how this works, but we are the VSL that sells this. We're testing a new version out of that. So that's getting filmed and edited as we speak. So hopefully that should be ready next week to, um, to launch as well. And maybe we can even improve this 10%. So yeah. That's the number so far. It's decent. Again, limited data. We're not spending a million dollars a day. We're not even spending five grand a day. We're not spending two grand a day right now. I just want to get up to like, if we can break even spending a grand a day, um, I'd be pretty happy with that. That's 30K a month, bring in 30K in revenue. And then we can kind of like, um, you know, that's a lot of customers for us at a $47 price point. And then I can work out more of the numbers and get the average order value. But that's just what I want to do. Like I want to, obviously I want to get it profitable, but if I can just get it spending more and we're still at break even, that would be a pretty good place to be. Cause then we just, you know, we're just getting a lot of front end customers, um, which will later on upgrade to this if they don't, or, you know, we do different products and stuff as well throughout the year which people will buy on. So, but yeah, that's the main focus. Um, like I said, last week's performance was pretty good. We had a few days where, you know, um, on one of the days, two people upgraded to this in one day, which was awesome for us. Cause I don't, not sure we've had that from the ads before, but two people from the ads upgrade on the same day. So we you know, I brought in an extra 2k in revenue just on one day from the ads. And then we had another day where we were actually profitable on this part of the funnel. So without anyone upgrading, you know, we had multiple people go through and buy the upsell, um, which was good. So, you know, as with low ticket, it goes up, it goes down. One day you're profitable, one day you're not, which is normal. You've got to look at it really at like a weekly view or a monthly view. Um, but I don't think we're like too far away. Like, again, we're break even at this point, which is cool. If we can just get this to over 2%, and we can get the cost per click down a little bit and then increase the average order value, even just like by $5, $10 maybe by increasing the price, I think we'd be in like a pretty solid position. So that's what I'm working on over the coming weeks. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>